Once you have your Craig 300 series pocket hole jig and easy set drill bit all set up, you're ready to position the jig on your workpiece to get ready to drill pocket holes. And thanks to the jig's simple setup and design, this is really easy. All you have to do is position the jig so that those thickness stops are against the edge or end of the workpiece. The jig has a non-slip surface on the underside that makes it hold very well, but you'll still want to clamp it in place. To do that, you can use Craig clamps or many other kinds. And thanks to the non-slip surface, it doesn't take much clamping pressure to hold the jig securely in place. Or you can make clamping the jig even easier by using the 300 series universal clamp adapter. It comes with the pocket hole jig 320 or is available separately. And it just fits into any of these recesses in either the drill guide or the spacer. All you have to do is push it into place, open up the jaws, and then slip your clamp in place and lock it down. This makes it really easy to move the jig and clamp as one assembly. So just put it in place. Again, make sure those stops are against the edge and clamp it. Then you'll be ready to drill pocket holes. That tells you how to position the 300 series pocket hole jigs on your workpiece, but let's talk a little bit about where to actually place the pocket holes. For a board like this 1x4 that's three and a half inches wide, or for boards that are a little bit narrower, two drill guides with a single spacer in between, which is the configuration of the pocket hole jig 320, is great. It puts those holes far enough apart to produce a nice strong joint. But what if you're working with a narrower board like a 1x2? You could drill one pocket hole, move the jig, and then drill the other pocket hole, but now you've got to clamp it down twice. Instead, you can just remove the spacer, put the drill guides together side by side, and then you can drill both pocket holes with only one clamp. But a lot of times you'll be using even wider boards like this 1x6. With the Pocket Hole Jig 300 series, there's even more options here. If you're in the standard setup for the 320, you could drill one hole, move the jig, drill the other hole. Or you can pick up the pocket hole jig spacers. It's just two more spacers that twist and lock and can be placed between the two drill guides. Now you've got one assembly to clamp down and you can drill two nicely positioned pocket holes in this wider 1x6. Still more options though. A lot of times with the 1x6, you'll want three pocket holes across the end. Just gives a little more strength in that joint. In that case, you can pick up the pocket hole jig expansion pack. It comes with one drill guide with its thickness stop and a spacer. So if you have the pocket hole jig 310 that just comes with one drill guide, it's a great way to add more spacing options. If you have the 320, once again, it expands the capability more because you can lock the expansion pack down and now you've got three pocket holes across the width of that board. You've only got to clamp it down once and with three holes, you'll get a super strong joint. If you're working with long boards to make something like a tabletop or large plywood panels, then the pocket hole spacing is a little bit different, but with the 300 series jigs, it's super easy. We recommend that you put one pocket hole about an inch in from each end of your large piece, and then additional holes fairly evenly spaced, about every five or six inches in between. I say fairly evenly because exact positioning with pocket holes doesn't matter that much. There are no holes in the mating board, so you don't have to worry about lining anything up. You'll just clamp the pieces together 
drive in the screws, and with multiple pocket holes, have a very strong joint.